So thank you so much to um, all of you who have joined us for this uh, Zoom presentation today. Um, I hope that uh, what we say is both useful and informative to you. Um, we will have a chance for some uh, questions at the end. So there is um, a Q&A um, possibility to use uh, in, in your Zoom, hopefully. So you will be able to type in any questions that you think of and we'll try and address as many as we can at the end, as I've said. Um, Obviously, if after this presentation you find that there's anything that you haven't asked that you've forgotten about, please don't hesitate. You can always email us and we'll get back to you as soon as we can with um, answers. Um, we are recording this, so um, we will be sharing the recording with all the parents um, just so that they can watch it and dip in and out at any time that suits them as well. So, as I said, thank you for joining us and uh, we, will, we will start. So the first thing we'd like to share with you is our vision about how we use technology uh, in Lady Bomb. And I'll just read the vision to you here. So our vision for learning is discovery, opportunity, success, and is embraced by all stakeholders. And what that means is that everybody who has something to do with Lady Barn embraces that vision. So the, the teachers, um, all the staff, the pupils, the parents, the governors, we all embrace that we want to include technology in order to achieve the things that we want to achieve with the children. Technology is part of who we are, it's our world today, and it's who we want to be. It is readily available to enhance and facilitate all teaching and learning, and is a key enabler for us to be an innovative and forward-thinking school. Through integrating technology into teaching and learning, our classrooms move beyond four walls, empowering all children to be confident, independent, creative thinkers and problem solvers. It really does mean that we can be inclusive with every single child who we have in our care. We educate our children to not only be themselves, but their best selves. And through the inclusion of technology into every day, we allow our children to realize their full potential. Um, an example that I can share with you about how our vision comes through and everything that we do is um, I was in a year six science class uh, just yesterday where they were dissecting hearts and um, it, it was fascinating to watch just the dissection but they had one heart between two children they were dissecting it they were taking photographs with their iPad um, of all the different parts of the heart that they could see inside um, and then at a later date they'll be able to take those images and actually use their styluses to label the different parts of the heart now previously to them having ipads that might you know that might have been done on a on a worksheet it might have been done on a very plain boring bit of paper um, but now we can actually get the children more involved in using their iPads to, to enhance the learning. They are absolutely immersed in everything that they do. And that's something that we are absolutely passionate about. We don't just use iPads for the sake of using iPads. We do it because it enhances learning and it, it just opens a whole, a whole world up for the children and gets them very, very excited about everything that we do. So um, I'm going to move over to uh, Mr Earnshaw now, who will just share with you um, a little video about all the different ways that we use technology in our lessons. And then he'll go on to talk to you a little bit more about all the things that we do to keep the children safe online. Well, um, I'm using the flag and I put um, all of these commands there. <laughs> Thank you. 
Okay, thank you very much. So as you can see there, we do use our iPads uh, to teach in ways that, that just weren't possible only a few short years ago. Now, if we talk about um, the impact that they're having, this is uh, one of our TT Rockstars, uh, some data from TT Rockstars. And you can see we had one day, the 7th of October, where 28,000 questions were answered in a day. Now, it sounds like a lot. I mean, it, it is a lot. But the average time each student spent on that uh, platform was seven minutes. Now, we did a, a little bit of maths and we worked out if a teacher was to answer mark each question in two seconds, it would take 15 and a half hours of, uh, of their time to give that feedback, which by using their iPads, they get instant. So the instant feedback is fantastic. And as you can see on the graph in the bottom right, the impact it has on their learning is, um, well, it's clear to see. So how do we manage 22 children in a classroom each with an iPad? We certainly don't just go to John Lewis, get an iPad, unwrap it and hand it to the children. There's lots of thought that goes into it, lots of careful planning, and we're very careful with our levels of protection. One of the best tools we use to make sure the children are doing as we want on the iPads is an app called Apple Classroom. Now, this app is installed on all teachers and all teaching assistant devices. And just like you can see here, we have a kind of a grid of all the children in our classes and we can see exactly what app they're on. In fact, it's developed further. Now we can see a live uh, snapshot of their screen. So if there's a child off task or if there's a child looking at Safari or something they're not supposed to be doing, we can very quickly say, please, can you um, can you get back on task? Now, Apple Classroom has lots of other features as well. A few of those, it's the ability to lock students in and out of apps. For example, if I was doing a lesson on video editing, I could lock the children into iMovie. So they're stuck in there until I unlock their iPads. So that means there's no distractions with other apps. Um, we can lock them out of the iPad completely if we need um, all attention on the teacher at the front. We can lock them, it looks like this. So you can see it's been locked by myself and it's locked so much I wasn't even able to screenshot that picture. I had to take it with my mobile phone. Um, easily navigation to, you can easily navigate to different links. That was something that took a long time in year one and two before Apple Classroom. You'd have to type in the long URL at the bottom. It would take the children almost uh, a quarter of the lesson to write those links in. But now you can just airdrop them across with Apple Classroom. Um, it's a great way to share work with classmates. We can put pictures of the, uh, the children's work on the board instantly, um, airdrop files. And at the bottom there, I've put, we can review apps that we use during the lesson. Now, I said we can lock children in and out of apps. Um, we don't tend to use this too much with year five and six. I tend to give them a, a bit more responsibility. But at the end of the lesson, we can actually see what apps those children have been on. And if it was a movie editing lesson and they've spent 20 minutes on Safari, it's just a bit of a red flag to say, have a look at their iPad and see what um, what they've been doing during that lesson. So it's very closely monitored. Now, what other steps do Ladybond House School take to protect your children? We've got our filtering system. We've had the Meraki filtering system for years. This is the one we had before iPads were introduced, and it's the one that protects the whole network, really. Uh, staff computers, staff devices, staff phones, the children's devices. It's kind of our base layer of filtering. Next, we've got Jamf, which is a management tool which we use the added restrictions. So by using Jamf, we, we, are, we can ensure that the children only have access to apps that we choose for them to have access to. We've also been able to uh, not allow the children to delete their browsing history. So it's not possible for children to delete what they browse. They're not able to open uh, incognito or private windows. Everything the children do on those iPads, we can, we can see. Um, we've also been able to use Jam to block YouTube. Now, it's not just blocked in school, it's blocked at home. The time limit, every uh, child in the school has a time limit on their device, which means it should go off at seven o'clock or eight o'clock at night, depending if they're in uh, infants or juniors. Um, and it won't come on again until seven o'clock in the morning. It will be absolutely useless between those hours. A Jamf Parent, I'm going to talk a little bit about Jamf Parent a little bit later on, but that's a, a new thing we've got that's extremely exciting. And like I said, YouTube, we've, we've been able to completely remove all 
child access to YouTube. Now there's some fantastic educational resources on YouTube, which staff still have access to. Did you want to mention anything about those, uh, Mr. Kingdom? Yeah, thank you, Mr. Henshaw. Um, good afternoon, everybody. Uh, thank, thanks for joining us. Um, you'll appreciate that over the last couple of years, particularly uh, here at school, we've done a lot of work in terms of developing the IT. And one of our overriding concerns within that besides providing really exciting experience for your, for your children, is to make sure that they stay safe. Uh, and so as we've developed the provision of IT, we've tried to stay uh, ahead in terms of um, online safety. And we've moved really from the very early days where teachers will observe carefully what's on the screen, which is, they, they still do, to having more um, monitoring solutions which, which are becoming available, the sort of things that uh, Mr. Enshaw has talked about. And it comes into our sort of broader remit really of safeguarding children and, and, and looking after them in, in the broadest sense. Um, I would say, of course, and you'll appreciate that um, it's not a perfect world and that we have um, careful procedures in place for members of staff and adults at the school if they see anything that um, the, you know, concerns them in any way. And also the same for children, that they're clear about who they can speak to uh, if that happens. Unfortunately, we've, you know, really to, to speak of, not had uh, anything of a great concern. Um, but it's, uh, we have seen the system working on occasions, which, which has been good. And I'd encourage you at home as well to kind of develop that sort of, I'm sure you have that sort of open dialogue and open conversation about what children do on, on computers. We tend to not to blame children for what, what um, is on the computers. And that, that way we find that we can, you know, find out from them if there's something appeared on screen that I shouldn't have done. Um, thank you, Mr. Enshaw. Yeah, so like Mr. Kingdom says, we, we, we've got five or six, or, or we, we're constantly looking at ways to improve the uh, security of our iPads, but there's no, there's no perfect solution, which is why arguably the most important tool we have is the education of the children. Uh, we spend a lot of time, not just in computing lessons, but across the whole curriculum, talking about the importance of online safety and educating the children on what to do if they see something online that makes them feel worried, scared or sad, how they can identify a trusted grown up and the steps they need to take to become a good citizen online. Now, the one in the bottom left, the kind of robots, they are from B Internet Legends, which is a scheme where there's uh, five different strands. So you can see there, we, we that's the type of things we were covering in our online safety lessons. So I'll just give you a second to read those. We talk about how to be a positive influence online, how to make a positive impact. We look at secure websites, where to share your personal information, where to share your personal details. So it's moved on a long way from just not talking to strangers online. Of course, that's still important, but we talk about lots of other things as well. At the end of year six, once this scheme's finished, they receive their certificate to be an official legend and they can uh, use the internet correctly and they sign a little contract and it's uh, just a bit of fun to end their primary school journey. On the bottom, your children will recognize some of these characters. There's lots of um, fantastic clips. There's Jesse and Friends, as you can see on the right, and there's a play like share there, which, which again, we watch these children get themselves in a bit of a predicament and we can pause and talk about what they should do in those situations. The next thing is National Online Safety. Now, this is a website that the school have subscribed to. We're, we're actually a national, ah, I can't say it, a National Online Safety uh, credited school, which means that all of our staff have access to uh, this portal and we've trained on here. Now, this is what it looks like. Uh, there's lots of courses. There's lots of explainer videos. This is aimed for parents of children from three to 18. So it really does tick every box. Um, the guides are fantastic. There seems to be another app popping up every single week. So the guides look like this. It's uh, one page, lots and lots of information. Um, but you can see the one on the right is about Roblox, tells you the, the threats. Uh, the one on the left is about the new FIFA that's been released, tells you things to look out for and just how to implement it safely in your house. There's a QR code at the end of this presentation, and we're also going to email it out uh, tomorrow morning, which will have a link where you can subscribe to our Lady Barn House School uh, National Online Safety Platform. Like I say, it's aimed for children three to 18. So there is, it, it goes above primary school level or what would hope to be primary school level. So if you do have older, older children, feel free to have a look on there as well. Mr. Kingdom, do you want to talk us through this one? Yes, thank you. Um, 
I'm sure uh, probably like the members of staff here that um, you at home use uh, some of the big search engines frequently, maybe all the time, such as Google. But I wonder if you were aware that most of those search engines uh, have settings that you can use to make them into what's often termed safe search. And generally, it's a fairly easy process if you look on the main screen. There's also uh, service providers um, that will work with you to provide uh, family uh, safety software to help with uh, making sure that you can monitor what uh, children access and also to provide filters so that there's only certain websites that um, you can go to. Uh, when you have uh, had your internet service provider you know, start your contract, you will have been given that information or certainly if you've done that quite recently. If you haven't, then generally it's a fairly easy task to uh, ring up the, the helpline for the internet provider or go to their homepage and they should provide you with software that will come sit on top of the, the software that, that is there that, that develops your or provides your internet connection. Also worth mentioning is a company called Squiggle. Uh, this is a um, search engine which is specifically for children. It's really good. It's a, it's a nice uh, interface that you can use. Um, so again, if it's something that you think would help with uh, your children at home, then um, do have a go with that. On the screen, a little lower down, are some really good sources of information. The NSPCC are, uh, as you perhaps won't be surprised to learn, a really leading source of information on safeguarding generally and actually in particular on online safety and they have particular pages for parents and carers as well as educators as well as teachers uh, and it's, it's very well written very informative very up to date and recommend it thoroughly internet matters also is um, a really good source of information particularly on online safety and then the the final um uh, organization which we'd like to uh, bring to your attention is Southwest Grid for Learning. You seem to have um, retitled themselves FWGFL. Now, in the very early days of the internet, they uh, got a name for being um, uh, an organization which was really interested in internet safety, in particular with um, children of school age. Um, they have a lot of very good information. We use them a lot um, here at school and they are another source of information for you. So try those out. You'll probably find that one of the three is something that appeals to you a little bit more than the others. I have a little look around that they're very easy to navigate and um, would provide some really valuable information in my opinion. Thank you. Thank you. So the next thing I want to talk about very quickly is Jamf Parent. Now Jamf Parent is something I'm quite excited about. I think will be a game changer in your houses. And it's a, it's a iPhone, iPad, Apple Watch, and very newly became an Android app that allows you to manage your children's school issued mobile device. Now, if you were to pick your child's iPad out of their bag, their screen would look very similar to this. Now, all these apps, of course, are appropriate. There's, there's nothing on there they shouldn't have but it might be distracting when they do their homework. They might tend to want to go on one app more than another what they're actually supposed to be on. Now with Jamf Parent, you download the app onto your phone and you link it quite simply to uh, your child's device, which will all be set out in the guide below. Um, and once you've chosen from a long list of apps you want them to access, you can, you can choose a time limit. Once you've set that, their iPad will then become more like this. So it will completely get rid of all the apps that may be distracting your child. They might keep veering towards TT Rockstars. You can choose the apps they might need for their homework, and you can also choose how long they go on those for. Now, it could be 20 minutes. It could be five hours. It can actually be days. Um, the good things about Jam School, of course, are the app restrictions. So we can say exactly what we want them to go on. You can get rid of Safari if they keep veering onto football websites and things like that. Um, the time restrictions are great. You can put, like I say, two, three hours or as low as five minutes, I think is the smallest. And you can create a weekly schedule. So you might give them a little bit more freedom on a, on a Friday uh, evening or at the weekend or vice versa, really. There's a great tool where you can actually set restrictions based on location. So you might choose to have everything locked down as soon as you get to your house. 
but on that journey to school, they might use their iPad to, I don't know, practice their times tables or something. So there's lots and lots of features. Um, please do not worry if you've got everything locked down on your child's iPad and you send them off to school, please don't worry and think, oh no, they're not gonna be able to use it. Whatever we choose to do at school completely overrides what you've, what you've put into place. Um, and there's a really detailed information uh, guide and tutorial for getting started, which will be on your, um, on the QR code that you'll see very shortly. Oh, very, very shortly. Um, here they are. So, uh, yep, on the left, you've got National Online Safety. This is going to be pinged out an email to you all tomorrow. So you can choose to scan those now with your phones or wait for the um, for the email to come through and click those. But there's four really good websites that will help you um, keep up to date. And that, that's all from me, I think, Mrs. Bear. Super. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Earnshaw and Mr. Kingdom. Um, so I hope that's been informative for you and interesting for you to hear all the different um, things that we have in place to keep your children safe, but also you've got a quick glimpse of all the exciting ways that we do bring their learning to life um, throughout all the different curriculum subjects that we teach at Lady Barn. We do have a few minutes available if there are any questions, so I think you should be able to type in um, at possibly the top of your screen, there might be a little Q&A button. So if you want to click on there, anything um, that you want to ask, if you just type it in and we will try and respond to it um, if we can. Um, so there's a question here and it says, um, if my child already plays a game that is rated over their actual age, should I stop them playing it? Mr. Kingdom, what do you think? Thank you. <laughs> Um, it's, it's always a difficult decision, isn't it, I think? Um, and as parents, we make what we think is the, is the right for children, of course. What I tend to do, I, I have two children. Um, my daughter's 14, my son is 12. And because I like to give a good example, in, in the main, I stick to the age restrictions. You know, I, 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 in the past, when I had more time, I was a great film fan, and uh, I knew somebody who worked for the classification board, and, and there were good reasons why these films, games are, are uh, given a particular age rating. So I would certainly caution anyone to look carefully at why that particular game is at that age limit. There will be certain criteria. So I very strongly recommend you look into that particular game. Having said that, you know, as parents, we make those individual decisions. And I've always had a, I've tried to have a sort of an open dialogue with, with my children and um, give reasons why I'm going to do something or not do something. Um, I think with information on technology, I mean, children, of course, will, will at times push things as far as they, they, they can. And um, I tend to think that routines are good and also um, to, give, to give children some sort of war, you know, warning that uh, you know, things are, are um, going to be stopped or, or limited. So I, I, I would perhaps suggest to say, um, well, I'll, I'll say what my, my take on that would be. I would say, actually, I'd, I'll have a look myself at that game. I'll look into it. Uh, and um, if I think it's not really appropriate, then, you know, it will have to be a case of waiting. Um, and I, I basically, I think on, you know, your own knowledge. So it's a good thing to say, actually, this game has got some content, which is, you know, and you can put it in whatever terms are appropriate for your children. And if need be to say, look, you know, it's, um, it's not, it's not really appropriate. But, you know, I've looked into it here, perhaps here's some alternatives, you know, that, that's, 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 um, I think probably a, a good strategy because, um, you know, children are going to want to push things on in the main and uh, you may find around the corner there's a, a few more games lining up. So, uh, you know, for what it's worth, I know parent, being a parent is not, not the easiest thing, but that would be my advice on that. Could, Thank could you, I just add very Kingdom. quickly that oh, the yeah. National Online Safety Platform, those guides I showed before, they are fantastic. They, they seem to have uh, hundreds of, of different games. So like I showed before, you can see it at a glance. Now, now they are written, they're actually created by gaming journalists. They're not written by someone who's got a bee in a bonnet who hates computer games. So they're very kind of impartial and will give you a, a good idea of the threats to look out for. Thank you. Thank you. Um, there's another question here. Um, where would you suggest children use the iPads at home? So I think I can answer that one. I would always suggest that they use iPads in sight of you. So whether it be in the same room or an adjoining room, but where, where you've got one ear listening to what they're doing so that whatever it is that whether they're doing 
a bit of homework or whether you've given them a bit of free time on the iPad, you are just always aware, just like we are at school, um, but you are always aware of, you know, what, what it is that they're watching, what it is that they're, they're accessing on the iPad. I would certainly never, ever recommend that you let your child use their iPad um, alone in their bedroom, for example. You, you, it's always, always, you know, important that you've always got that, that ear um, just, to, just to check that they are doing something safe. Um, next question is, are the children allowed free play on the iPads in school? Um, so the answer to that is usually no. Um, we use them as a bit like a pencil case. We use them as a learning tool. Um, sometimes we will use them if we think it will enhance the learning of the lesson. Other times we might not use them in the lesson at all. Very occasionally, if um, a child has finished their, their set work for that lesson um, and there's just a couple of minutes left until the end of the lesson we might say oh I tell you what then pop on to TT Rockstars for the last sort of three or four minutes or potentially go on to Reading Eggs and do a little bit of the next lesson um, and we, we might give them very occasionally the odd choice in, in that manner but, but we don't usually just let them use it um, for example at home time we wouldn't let the children go on them at home time um, as a bit of free choice um, I can't see any more questions coming through at the moment. So hopefully we have um, answered everything for you there. Um, if you do have any other questions that sort of ping into your mind later on tonight, don't hesitate to, to email in and we will always get back to you with as much information as we can. Um, as I've mentioned, we have recorded this presentation, so we will be sharing the link with parents uh, tomorrow morning. And the, um, the image that you can currently see on your screen, we will send you that image as well. So if you haven't managed to um, click on any of the QR codes at the moment, uh, you will be able to do so. As I say, fingers crossed it'll come out tomorrow morning. So, um, oh, I think we might have. Oh, no, it's fine. We haven't. Sorry. Uh, so uh, thank you so much for joining us. Um, have a lovely evening. And um, we won't see you now because obviously it's a training day for the teachers tomorrow. So have a fantastic, fantastic half term. Uh, we do hope you get lots of relaxation time and spending some wonderful time with your wonderful children. And we will see you again on the 31st of October. OK, thank you so much again. And many thanks to Mr. Ernjo and Mr. Kingdom as well for all your expertise and your knowledge. Thank you. <laughs> okay, thank so you, everybody. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Bye.